Does it happen to you sometimes you have a type of sound in your head and you want to recreate it but you don't really know how or which device to use? So today I will go through all Ableton saturation distortion device and show you the way I see it and in order to make you understand how each device sound and works so this way you can make better decision when crafting your own sound. Keep in mind these are guidelines and I will always recommend to experiment using device in the way they are not intended to. That's often how it leads to happy accidents which can be great but also you don't want neither to spend half an hour to look for the device that's gonna get you to the sound. So we're gonna go through over all device. It's not gonna be a tutorial explaining you how to use them but more how they sound. All right let's jump into Ableton. Let's start with saturator. So saturator I see it as the device that can help me to improve the loudness without damaging too much the original signal like without creating too much artifact or without giving too much color. For example I have this stab sound here. If I just want to add a bit of loudness. So you have different modes that I like to see as different level of intensity like analog clips of sine and bass shaper maybe something more gentle where medium curve you start to bit a bit more aggressive, hard curve is more like very aggressive. Now obviously I said it doesn't distort too much the sound, obviously if you crank up the drive it squash everything but what I mean by that is that it will be the device I will use more in a gentle way to kind of just add some passive loudness, put the sound more in the face without damaging too much the signal. Now like any saturation distortion uh, it will always react very differently depending on your audio source. So you could see like the different mode except the intensity of the saturation it was not a big difference but for example if we use it on a kick hear how each mode alter the kick drum. So I know I said it's a clean saturation but you have two modes like sinuous fault and wave shaping which kind of sound more like a metallic distortion saturation. So here. Next up we have amp which I will clarify as buzzy, gritty, a bit noisy. For example I like to use it for anything which is like kind of unison, super so type of sound because this kind of buzzy sound already so the amp is gonna amplify that. It's also very good for kind of industrial sound as it makes things a bit more aggressive. But it can get also very noisy. For example, here I have this dub chord. Or like on this scent. Now cabinet. So usually this goes after amp. That's why I included it in the list, but it's not really a saturation. You could consider it more like the kind of tone you could get with the EQ with filtering and resonating some frequency. And because of that, I like to use it on a dub techno chord because this kind of filter effect works well for dub techno. So I have this chord here and with the cabinet. And because it gets this kind of room kind of feelings, uh, you can also use it on drums. But yeah, I like to kind of use it for more old school vibe or like having adding this really weird room effect to a sound. Okay, then we have overdrive, which I will say it's more like crunchy and gritty. I'm gonna use an electric piano example here. You can really hear how it adds a nice great crunch to the sound. I love to use it on kick drum because especially you can uh, kind of filter a certain part of the signal you want to distort and that's really great. For example, I have two here. And hence this mid high. And you can do in the low as well. With a very narrow band around 50 Hz and very small dry wet amount. And yeah, both together. Very nice. I love also to use it on hats because again you can filter and like kind of squash a little bit the very higher frequency that add a bit of noise, a bit of crunchiness, uh, kind of make you hats a bit more brighter. Now one of the classic use also is with kind of 303 sounds. <laughs> Really great to make the sound scream a little. And in the same idea of device, you have like pedal. So this is very aggressive, screamy, dirty, noisy kind of sound. For example, I have this 
sound and you can hear how it scream with the fuzz but yeah you can use it also on a kick drum especially the distort and overdrive mod nice sound finally to show you like the kind of screaming effect i have the sound and we say and to compare with amp because you it might sound similar for you to amp where it's like both aggressive and noisy amp is more like buzzy i would say where pedal is a bit more yeah screamy Next up we have Redux that it's mostly used to reduce the quality of your audio, kind of low five bite. But I also like to qualify it as a kind of a digital crunch. So you have this crunchiness but a bit more digital and it's great also to enhance transient of sound. Add a bit of character. It works also well on acid. You can get this. If you automate. You can really crush the sound with bit part. Another way I like to use it is on pad and to automate actually the rate. Uh, you're gonna hear how you get this nice effect. It's pretty common trick. You get this nice noisy touch on top. Pretty sweet. Next up we have erosion. It's really great to add a bit of noise grit to your sound. So you have the noise and white noise mod which is gonna add noise depending on the band. So that can be great to add a bit of excitement to a sound because noise is great to add excitement. So for example in Wavetable you don't have a noise generator. So if you want like to use proper noise uh, you need to add it on extra. So for example and I'm gonna add just gonna add a bit of excitement now you also have the white noise which is similar but it's way much more on the side and it's pretty great this actually to add a bit of stereo to kind of fake the stereo on the sound especially for example on the open hat which is already noisy but it works also on scent it can really enhance a little bit the stereo like kind of fake the stereo with the stereo noise and finally you are in erosion you have the sign mode which is very similar to the redux as well kind of adding this digital distortion so for example here on the acid and so yeah a bit less pronounced than the redux but still can be useful sometimes next we have vinyl distortion which is great to do other things than just adding like this classic noise vinyl crackle it, it does that well but there is also a nice distortion and stereo effect so for example on the kick for the distortion it's nice but listen on descent how it adds a nice stereo and a bit more drive also obviously you can control how much drive you want you want the effect to be a bit more pronounced then we have drum bus so this is kind of drum group processing uh, i like to use it for example like here i have my scent with all of the effect and i will use it at the end of the chain i like because you can really kind of make everything glue more in the face and more modern with that You see some, even the sound already pretty much bigger in the face, it's still bring you it in the face more. Okay, now we have dynamic tube, to be honest, I uh, don't really use it. I found it work well on guitar, but on synth or drums, I always feel like I get the idea how it can like distort the sound in a certain way, almost like a uh, rock the sound, you can hear. But I always find better other device to do the job rather than this one so but yeah if you have any tips on how you use it in a very interesting way just let me know in the comment all right then we have raw which is raw is a lot of things this is quite a device i don't even know where to start it's quite complex but i love the multiband because you can saturate a certain way certain band and can really give character to certain sound i, I like for example on kick It's great because this device is great if you want to experiment. There is a lot of room for that and to prove that there is this sound. And with just with raw. Yeah, this is really the device I would take if I want to experiment. Now, I like to use it for loudness, obviously, also because of the multiband mode can really allow you to bring loudness.
But yeah, I made a video about this device. If you want to know how I like to use it, because there is infinite way and it's probably my favorite. But the thing is, I will not use it all the time because it's great to experiment, but it's also like that because there is a lot of parameter, but which means that it's also quite complex. And sometimes when you just want a simple distortion, I will not take raw because, you know, you need maybe a bit more tweaking to get where you want. Well, for example, with Overdrive, you would just turn two knob and you got your sound. But the day I want something a bit different or I want to experiment, I go with raw. Now you have this color limiter, which is from a Max for Live expansion called Creative Extension. Uh, it's a free Max for Live pack that you can grab from uh, Ableton website or from Ableton Place. And I like to use it because it adds a lot of warm it i feel it for me i consider it a little bit like a tape saturation even though it's a limiter i not always use the limiter but just the saturation part and you're gonna hear for example on the kick add this nice warm and now you can hear on pad i have this gain compensation here so You can see how you're hitting the same, but it's feel a bit more fuller and louder and warmer. So yeah, hope now you can understand how each device work and sound. If you want to grab the project, it's available for my Patreon. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.